Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, um, because everyone, it's time we had a chat about Richard Lehman. So Lehman is an author I read an awful lot of when I was in my teens and twenties. And when I was doing a little bit of research um, for this video, I discovered that his books had indeed been very popular in the UK and in some European countries around that time, so in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I certainly remember as a teenager his his books, so these um, kind of headline, so published by headline, these books being, you know, very visible in bookshops and there being, you know, a lot of different titles available. Um, apparently it was only towards the end of the 90s when Leisure Books picked him up um, that his book started, you know, he started getting a bit of success in the US, his his home country, um, and then sadly he died in two thousand and one, so didn't um, didn't get to enjoy that home success for very long. Um, but yeah, as I say, certainly as a as a teenager growing up, I was very much aware of his work, and it seems to me that at the moment he's kind of being rediscovered a bit by YouTubers and you know booktubers and, and horror readers. Um, particularly in the US, as they look for um, look for writers from that kind of golden age of modern horror of the eighties and nineties, outside of the you know the ones that everyone's heard of, like Stephen King and Dean Koontz. Um, and given the you know the volume of of books that he wrote, so he wrote over thirty novels. Um, you know, Layman, I think is is a prime candidate for people to pick up now. Um, so I thought. I would spend a bit of time talking about him and my reaction to his to his work. Now, obviously, everyone has a completely different take on books and authors. These are only my opinions, and if you disagree with them, feel free to leave a comment and we can have a chat about it. As I've said, I read a lot of Lehman when I was when I was a young man, um, and then kind of went off him. And I went off him, I think, a because um, I realised that there were a lot of better writers of horror out there. Uh, and B, because there's an, a, a consistent theme of misogyny in his books that I began as I matured to find quite unpleasant. So his books frequently feature, um, you know, female characters in peril, um, as was, uh, you know, I guess kind of the trend in, in horror and suspense cinema in the 70s and 80s um, when he was starting to write. Um, you know, that kind of woman in peril um, cinema was very popular back then. Um, and you see a lot of that in his books. So a lot of his books feature women being stalked by serial killers and things like that. Um, but more than that, his books really do labour their descriptions of, of the female anatomy. Um, and, you know, he spends an awful lot of words um, on describing in particular breasts um, he, he definitely seems to have a complete obsession with um, with breasts and he spends a lot of time talking about them and not only does it get to feel a bit creepy after a while it's also just quite boring um, you know I've, I've got no problem with breasts but I don't need to read about them all the time if I'm honest um, so anyway having having stopped reading Layman um, as I became aware that you know, he was he was his books were kind of popping up in my social media feeds a bit more, so on on Instagram in particular. Um, I th I thought I'd give him another try and see what I thought. Um, so I reread what I remembered as being my favourite novel by him, um, which is a book called Savage. Um, so I reread that a couple of years ago, and and I really enjoyed it. Um, so Savage is quite different from his other books in that it's got a historical setting, so it's set in the late nineteenth century. Um, and it's about Jack the Ripper. Um, so the the premise of Savage is that, so it starts in London, so Jack the Ripper is, you know, going around killing people. Um, he gets a, a, a young man um, in London at the time, witnesses some of the crimes, um, and they both end up fleeing to the US. So, you know, Jack goes to try and get away from um, the investigation into him, um, and the young guy, if I remember rightly, effectively goes to escape Jack, who's on his trail. Um, 
what then what the book then turns into is a kind of boy's own cowboy adventure type book um with a you know a kind of trip across america um with the young guy kind of bumping into jack the ripper again at various points and, and eventually trying to stop him and it's quite a it's quite a fun and entertaining read and quite atypical of of layman's work so that was the first book of his that i reread and you know that was okay that got a thumbs up from me the second one um, was a book called Cut, which I don't think I'd actually read before, which, which I believe is one of his later books, um, which, to be honest with you, was a complete mess. So it's a very weird mix of, um, again, a kind of serial killer story. So it's about a young guy um, with all sorts of uh, problems um, who goes on a killing, a, a kind of rampage of, of murder and rape. Um, so you've got that as one storyline and then woven into it, you've got this other storyline, which is almost like a comedy of manners about this group of people who, who are either students at or faculty at a college um, and the kind of relationships they have with each other and the fact that they're all sleeping with each other. Um, so these two stories are kind of mashed together. It almost feels like you took two completely separate books and, and ran them together um, and it doesn't really work and it's a bit of a mess and some of the um you know certainly this this kind of the, the serial killer character um exhibits a lot of the the kind of slightly creepy traits that i've talked about um at the start in terms of description of women and things like that it just all feels a bit unpleasant the next one i, I read was was one i'd read before but didn't really remember but it's one that people often call out as being one of his better books um, and that was Funland. And that was actually the reason I reread that is I'm preparing a series of reviews of books that were nominated for the Stoker Awards. And, and Funland was nominated for a Stoker um, in the year it came out. It didn't win, but it was nominated. So it was obviously, you know, fairly highly thought of in the horror community at the time. Um, and it's a lot better written. So I read that not long after I read Cut. And it's a lot better written than Cut. So it hangs together really cohesively as a story. Um, and, you know, it's well plotted and things like that. So it's about a coastal community in California um, with a kind of amusement park, um, hence the title Funland. Um, and the amusement park has a problem with homeless people. So it's kind of like a boardwalk and pier and things like that. And there's a lot of homeless people there. And the local kids in the town, um, and, and indeed the community at large, kind of a, a, a object to this homelessness problem that they've got. So it's basically about a group of teenagers from the town um, who kind of band together and go around attacking these homeless people in an attempt to drive them out of the community. Um, and what's unpleasant about it is, so, so it's got some of the kind of creepy, you know, extended descriptions of breasts and things like that that his other books have but what's most creepy about it is just or most unpleasant about it is just the whole attitude to, to homelessness so it really feels like um like layman is kind of he, he knows that these kids are, are doing the wrong thing and are breaking the law but you still feel like he really sympathizes with them and there's there's a lot of writing about their uh, motives and things like that um, and very little, um, or indeed none at all, about the experience of, of the homeless people. And, it, and in fact, as the book progresses, the homeless people are really quite demonised um, and, and uh, towards the end literally portrayed as monsters. Um, which, you know, just to, to a modern reader, and maybe even to a reader, you know, when the book came out in the early 90s, I think it was, just does not feel appropriate or nice or right at all. Um, the other big problem with the book is it, it's kind of boring. So it's it's quite a long one and it's only right at the end, in the last probably 10%, um, that there's any real horror. And, and when it kicks in, the horror is actually pretty good, but it's an awful long way to get to it. Um, and it's very rambly at times, which is, you know, definitely one of Lehman's um, less successful traits as a writer is he does tend to ramble a bit in the same way that Stephen King does but when Stephen King does it it kind of works when Lehman does it it just feels a bit rambly um he could definitely have done with a better editor um so Funland you know better written than cut but still you know I, I definitely had problems with it and that brings me to the to the most recent book I've read which I just finished the day before yesterday um which is this one Island so this one I read very deliberately because I was kind of thinking that, you know, having read these 
three books of his again recently. I've I've I felt like I was kind of doing a bit of a reappraisal of of Layman's work, and An Island is the book that I remember disliking the most. And it, and in fact, I think it was probably the book that turned me off him. Um, you know, towards the end of my um, my stint of you know, which was you know for a good few years, but my stint of reading and enjoying his books. Um, so let's talk about Island. Island is a really really unpleasant book and the reason it's I, I think it's so unpleasant is that the the elements of layman's writing and uh you know kind of interests and themes which i've talked about which you know crop up in pretty much all of his books so particularly this kind of victimization of women and fetishization of women's bodies and extended and creepy descriptions of breasts um all those things in most of his books are filtered in that there are other things going on in the book yeah so there's lots of other stuff going on in the book and that element is there but you can kind of choose to ignore it because if you if you just ignore it for a, you know a page or a paragraph or whatever the book moves on to something else that doesn't happen in Ireland that's basically all that Ireland is and it's 500 pages long um, so it's not a short book by any means so what happens in Ireland is um, it starts with a, a yacht um, exploding and on the yacht are this kind of extended family um, so there's a there's the kind of the, the head couple if you like of the family who are kind of an, an older couple in their kind of late 40s 50s and then their kids and their kids various spouses or boyfriends or girlfriends or what have you um, so what you end up with is this this group of people um, who've who've basically they stopped at this island this deserted island they've got off their yacht to um, have a picnic and stuff like that on the island and then the yacht's blown up so they're marooned on the island and it's all told from um, the perspective of the protagonist um, Rupert who is a young guy I think he's supposed to be kind of early 20s um, who is dating the one of the daughters of the family and there's three there's three daughters in the family um, He's dating a girl called Connie, who he doesn't really get on with and basically was about to break up with, but felt a bit awkward about doing it and then got offered to go on this lovely holiday to the Caribbean for free. So he thought he might as well. Um, so you've got these people ruined on an island. All the women are just in bathing suits, bikinis, because um, they were just on a picnic for the day. Um, and Rupert relays what's happening and probably... A good 30-40% of what happens in the book is Rupert looking at the women and assessing their bodies. Um, so there's loads and loads of it is devoted to descriptions of, you know, the relative sizes of the breasts of the different female characters and things like that. How good or bad they look in their swimsuits. Um, you know, one of the women is fat, so there's a lot of fat shaming and stuff about how unpleasant she looks compared to the other ones. Um and Rupert, you know, at times writes because it, it's basically written as his journal. So it's it's supposed to be him, you know, literally documenting what's happened. And he says at times that he, that he hopes no one finds the journal because of all this horrible stuff he's written in it. Um, so he knows that he's doing wrong, um, but it still it just feels odd to be honest with you. And um, he's also, you know, so, so the funny thing about the island is uh, about island is so I said that the books were. Um, you know, quite popular in Europe in the 80s and 90s. The German title for Ireland, um, and I'm assuming, I haven't checked, but I'm assuming this is just the German word for Ireland, is, so it's called Die Insel. Uh, Insel spelled I-N-S-E-L. Um, but Rupert is a classic Insel, and I think this is, you know, the, the book predates that as a term, but he is someone who, so he's dating this girl, Connie, but basically she's resisting his advances. I think they've kissed a couple of times, but that's it. So he's he's a virgin. He's massively sexually frustrated. Um, and he feels kind of self-justified in his, A, slagging off, you know, Connie in particular, um, because of the fact that she, you know, she won't resist, uh, that she continues to resist him. Um, but also, you know, feels completely vindicated in his obsessing over the bodies of both Connie's mother um, and her uh, stepsisters um, because you know he's not getting what he wants from her so that's you know that's pretty dodgy as well as the book progresses 
it becomes apparent that so a couple of the male characters get killed. Um, there's a mysterious character going around. Um, basically, he's killed these uh, two of the men. So there's three men. He's killed two of the two of them that aren't Rupert. Um, and it becomes apparent that he's trying to kill off the male characters so he can he can keep the women imprisoned on the island um, and have them all for himself. Um, and so we get as the book progresses, we get um, you know scenes where the women are imprisoned in cages. Um, it turns out there's actually some other people on the island, including some uh, twin sisters um, who are objected to the same kind of objectification by Rupert, but also, you know, sexual assault by this other character. Um, so these twin sisters who are 14 years old, um, but are treated in exactly the same way by layman really as, as the women who are older. Um, so that again is pretty unpleasant. Um, and we're starting to get into spoiler territory a bit here, but I feel like I need to go here. So where the book ends with is that Rupert manages to kill this other character um, who has imprisoned all the women. So Rupert manages to kill him and then decides that he's just going to keep the women locked up. Um, and that's how the book ends, with, with Rupert deciding that it's fine for him to keep the women locked up and he, he can then continue to do um, what he wants with them um, now that the, the, the other threatening male character has gone and that's the that's the final happy twist at the end of the book you know coming from from layman's interesting mind um yeah so it's it's a really really unpleasant book and and this kind of obsession with breasts goes to the extent that you know there's a scene where rupert discovers um a female corpse and because of the way the corpse is positioned and things like that, it's very contrived. But basically, he can't figure out if it's one of the women he knows, um, because he's separated from them at that point in the story, or if it's a random woman he doesn't know. So in order to try and figure out if it's a woman he knows or not, he feels the corpse's breasts. I don't know where that came from, but it seems a very strange thing to do. Um, yeah, so that's a that's a flavour of what Ireland is like. And I will say, in Layman's defence, I think Ireland is definitely the book of his that does those things the most and it is most troubling in that regard. Um, but they, these elements are, are here in all his books. Um, but, but, so Juan from Playground Visions talked about Layman on one of his videos not so long ago. And what he said about Layman was... And I'm paraphrasing here, but basically, Lehman is kind of terrible, but there are merits to his work as well, albeit slim ones. And, and on balance, the terrible stuff and the, the better stuff kind of even out just about enough to make it OK to read him. Um, and I think that's kind of true. I don't think it's true in Ireland at all. I think I think the, the deficit side of Ireland, the debit side of Ireland is far outweighs the credit side. Um, but in some of the other books, it is true. You know, they are often, they're easy to read. They're often quite exciting. You know, they're, they're, you never have to wait long for something to happen, um, generally speaking. So, he, you know, he keeps the pages turning um, and he does have, you know, occasionally he does have some kind of interesting ideas. But really, they're like reading, they're like reading 80s B movies, um, which, you know, in, in a lot of ways sounds quite appealing um it's just when it when he stretches that boo movie out to a 500 pages it's probably a bit longer than it needs to be but in, in his shorter books i think that you know that kind of works um so yeah as you saw at the start of the video you know i've ended up buying foolishly a big stack of layman books which i think i probably read most of these back in the day um and i will you know i've, I've spent however long i've spent basically saying i don't think layman's a very good writer and I think his views are, are, are a bit dodgy and the way he expresses those views in his books is unpleasant. But you know what? I probably will read these because there is enough entertainment in there as well. Um, and this is something I've been thinking about quite a lot recently, to be honest. Not just because of the Labour books, but because I'm rereading these as well. The Gore books by John Norman, which are similarly um, very dodgy in terms of their sexual politics. So these are about uh, a kind of another fantasy world that this guy from earth travels to 
um, where women um, are kind of happily submissive to men and there are slave girls and things like that. And on the one hand, they're, you know, they're really quite enjoyable pulp adventure stories. Um, but on the other hand, um, they've got this very twisted view of, of human existence, which is quite offensive. Um, but again, like with most of the Lehman books, the, the, you know, the ledger always seems, for me at least, to land just on the side of them having enough good stuff to outweigh the bad. Um, and that's, you know, it's always going to be a personal thing for readers. Um, it's up to individuals to decide, you know, how much how much crap they can take with their entertainment. Um, and, you know, particularly when you're digging into older, pulpy type books, there's a, there, you know, let's be honest, there's a lot of it about. Um, you know, I read, and this is not really a pulp, but I read the first of the Maygrey novels a while ago, which is incredibly anti-Semitic, which I wasn't expecting at all. Um, but I think, you know, it was written in, I don't know when it was written, the 20s, 30s. You know, it's, it's unfortunately, it's of the time. So you do have to, you know, put up with some of that stuff. Um, when you're reading older stuff, but even with modern stuff as well, let's be honest, um, it's not something that we've completely got away from, unfortunately. Um, and I would never criticise anybody for reading anything really um, that has views I don't hold, because you know clearly I, I do that myself. Um, but also, as I say, it's a it's a personal choice, and I think the important thing is that we we read these things, we go into these books with our eyes open. Um, we read them with our eyes open clearly but you know what I mean um you know we, we we think critically about what we're reading and don't just let it sink into us um in the same way as you know we should do with everything with with any media we consume with the news that we read um you know with movies we watch and things like that because there's always you know there's always an agenda it's always somebody's view of the world that you're reading no matter no matter what it is um, and, you know, we need to be comfortable enough in our own view of the world. And, um, you know, when we think something is wrong, then then we should call it out. That's absolutely the right thing to do. Um, and we should make other readers aware of it. So, you know, when I when I do reviews, I always try and include, um, you know, content warnings and to call out any dodgy politics so that so that people are aware of it when they go into the book um, or the movie or whatever. Um, so yeah, this, this has felt like a bit more of a rambly video than usual, so apologies for that. And, and also apologies if the quality of the lighting changed dramatically, but I, I had to pause for a bit in my filming um, and then come back to it. Um, but yeah, as always, I hope you found that interesting. I hope it stimulated some thoughts in you. Do let me know in the comments. Um, if you're a layman fan, fantastic. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, clearly I'm not, but also clearly I can't stop reading his stuff, so he's obviously doing something right. Um, but yeah, as always, I hope you're all safe and well. I do appreciate your time watching the video. Um, take care and I will speak to you again soon. Cheerio.